I've got most of the weeding done now, so what I intend to do is take it on a little plot tour. I had a bit of a surprise while I was doing the weeding and uh, I left the top of the Envira mesh off while we had the forecast rain showers and it looks as though well, I'm not sure whether there's a fox or something been in, been rolling over but it's flattened all the onions. Anyway, let's get going. We'll start off with the carrot tanks and by next year all these six tanks should be in production with carrots but uh, because this is the first year We've had to put uh, manure in to build the soil up, so it's a bit too rich. Anyway, in this one we've got uh, spring onions, some lettuce, and right down the edges we've got some radish, the ball type, which is... Uh, actually, the flavour's quite nice, and the decent size as well. So, uh, that's that. We've got a tank of sweet candle here, which was planted on these. It's the 31st of May. That's, an, that's another tank there, a sweet candle again the same. It was just a bit earlier. And that was the, what's that, the first tank. I've got a small tank as well. We should be do well for carrots this year. This tank here, we've got some Ishikura Japanese onions and some more radish. They've actually gone over, so I'll be uh, probably taking those out and doing a bit more re -sowing. Here's the bed here, which is predominantly the outdoor tomatoes, the Crimson Crush. But as you can see, we've got some uh, dahlias and cosmos growing in. And, uh, it's got a bit of food for me now on the tomatoes. I'll just show you the, the dahlias. They've got some lovely flowers on. A few of these need dead heading. All the cosmos. And there's a lovely pom pom type dowdy down here. You can see that just behind the leaf. So the um, crimson crushed tomatoes have really thickened up, and we've got some decent sized fruits hidden in there as well. Moving on to the brassica cage, everything in there is looking tickety boo. These first four plants along here are of uh, calabrese. I'm just starting to form a head, you can just about see it. The big row along the back is uh, the all have the sprouts, the first two rows going the full length of the three beds. All have the sprouts. I've still got some more support piles to put in this last bed. I've done two beds. Moving on here. We got some uh, cabbage which is forming up nicely. Originally, they had a bit of a like a mosaic pattern on, which was a bit concerning really. I know it wasn't blight, but uh, I caught up with a chap at God as well, Chris Collins, and uh, he said it was a mineral deficiency. So I gave him a drop of Epsom salts, and it's definitely perked them up, and they look to be on the way to being a decent crop. Um, these here. These smaller ones are cauliflower, the Clapton. That was in the middle here. These are also cauliflower. Clapton obviously planted out a bit earlier, so the size is looking okay. These four cauliflowers here was something which was given me by another plot holder, and the variety is called Albeni, which I'd, uh, I think I've grown them before, I'm not sure. Back on the other end, we got some more of the cabbage and last but not least on this end I bought the uh, the calabrese again again these are just forming heads you can see along the top as I said earlier the uh, sprouts this first two beds have been propped up with support canes ready for when they grow a bit bigger she lots are starting to form some nice clumps now so uh, they'll be coming out soon one of the beds you can see there which I haven't finished weeding is because that there is the garlic and uh, there's a lot of rust on it now so that'll be 
ready to come out probably in the next few days. And the last few rows on the end there is the elephant garlic. A little area about the onions and this is the result. You can see them flattened for some reason, yet the leeks at the back are still standing. Um, these in here are the um, banana shallots, the zebrun, and I can't really see no damage, just why they've gone flat. So it hasn't been wind because the protection from the cage. And moving on again round here, the same thing's happened. It's like one of these crop circles only disappeared on the onions. Still, I like the pickup. The asparagus. Now I've just let it start to all go to seed. Someone did mention earlier that I'd put the canes in and the roots are quite near to the top and sensitive. So next year I plan on building a bit of uh, support framework around it and let them just flop across each other. Strawberry bed. They've given us a really good crop this year. And believe it or not, this is their fourth year. I did intend to take runners last year, never got round to it. But uh, they've still repaid me. However, this year I've got the pots ready and I'll be potting up a few runners from here. This bed here is the main crop potatoes. There's two beds and they're the Sarpa Mira. And uh, the foliage has grown quite quick. This barrier netting does a really good job. Stops it all flopping over onto the paths. And while we're in this, the potato bed, we'll just have a look up and see there's our sunflowers and name going along quite happily. I just noticed there's a couple of them got heads just starting to form flower heads. So uh, they'll put a bit more size on and hopefully they'll put some decent flowers out for the sunflower challenge. Moving down here to, here, to the bottom, you can see the foliage on these potatoes are quite a bit more higher and these are the second earliest I put in Charlotte. So these will be the first to come out. I do keep my eye on the Blightwatch website and uh, if there's any sign of it in our area, the first thing I'll be doing is chopping the foliage down on these and uh, I'll put a bit of black plastic over. There's the parsnips and you may remember I had a little bit of an issue with the germination on these. But the other seed or so finally kicked in, thankfully. There's still a couple of stations which haven't germinated, but that's not much of a problem. The size of these now, within the next few days, I will be taking the coals off and not leaving them on like next year, last year, and they actually got trapped. The crop next door to them, which is doing very, very well, is the Swede, and they've really put on some good growth. Looking down the bottom there, I don't know if you can see it, you can see the neck starting to form. So hopefully we're going to get a decent crop of Swede from here. The variety on there is Tweed F1. Moving on to the next bed. This is a row here we have of beetroot. It's the old favourite Baltardy. Always a reliable crop and uh, it looks to be in good condition there. These are just a few odd brassica plants that I've got left because uh, in the middle of this bed here I'm going to be taking all this off there and be putting, I've got another couple of rows of peas out. For some reason, the first row of peas I put out there, I never videoed or filmed the cropping of these, and we've had a quite a decent crop off those. They are the variety called Kelvin Wonder. And on the last bed, which you saw in the last video, the sweet corn, since we've had that drop of rain, both that and the celery have come on nicely. Two more rows of peas to go out here, and this variety here is her screen shaft. They'll be ready to go out. What I might do is actually take those out now because there's very few pods left on there. Revitalise the soil and plant these straight in. So they'll be ready to go. Looking in this bed quickly, we've got uh, the purple sprouting broccoli I put in the pots. I can just see some new growth on there, although the first week or so they did look a bit uh, as though they objected to going in the pots, but I think they've picked up now. And on the outside we've got a three cores yet with the, some flowers on. And uh, to join the other group, the sunflowers here are just starting to move. Into the bean tunnel and on the left we have runner beans. And on the right we have the French climbing bean, Cabra. 
For some reason, the pea beans have been very, very poor germination, and uh, I've tried another sowing, so if we get any more, I'll be putting these on this end down here. The broad beans have given us an amazing crop this year, and we're still cropping. This variety is the, it's a trusted variety called Bunyard's Exhibition, and uh, I say we've still got quite more to crop. Moving into the allotment greenhouse, you can see there all the tomatoes seem to be doing fine. The cucumbers at the bottom, some are putting fruit on, there's one on the end, they don't look too happy in fact. I think it's days are numbered but we'll leave it and see what's happening. But his, his friend next door looks quite healthy and there's about four or five fruits already on there. Tomatoes are starting to put fruit on now. and. Uh, I'm feeding these twice a week now with uh, liquid comfrey and the same the other side and then the edges we've got the uh, sweet peppers we'll finish this tour off with a look at the fruit and the uh, first year for the black currants and you can see they seem to be happy there is a vouch on the self this year in an effort to keep a few from myself, I've put a, the net curtain over just to protect a few because as soon as they go red, the birds, I mean the blackbirds, but this year, first time ever I've noticed the starlings found out they like them and they're actually devouring them. This here is just a view under the net curtain and you can see the quantity of fruit on here, it's unbelievable. But the rest of the trees, like you say, it's really heavily cropped. Not at lost much because of germ drop this year, so it is bearing quite a few fruits this year. I'll just move around as you can see. And uh, so, might be picking again a bit later on. The agrament russet apple is. Uh, Again, got quite a few fruit on. Although the June drop did see a lot of this come off. However, there's still a decent crop on there. It's thinned it out nicely, so hopefully we'll get some decent sized fruit on there. This is my first sowing of carrots. You may recall this was kept in the greenhouse for a while. I've just moved a bit of soil away and you can see we've got some decent carrots coming on in there. So this variety again is a sweet candle. The pears are out in abundance again this year. And uh, we had a decent crop off this last year as well. So, um, not sure of the variety on this. I think it, somebody said it was a Williams, not sure. It's definitely not a conference, which is my favourite pair. I'm going to stop off is the trusty apple tree, which I don't know its name, but the fruit tastes really good and even more better. It uh, crops quite heavily, so that's looking good as well. We'll finish the tour off with a look at the hanging baskets and the wall baskets. You may recall I originally planted just begonias in these and the, at the time they did look a bit sparse but now they're starting to thicken up and spread out and the, the flowers are starting to come on. It looks quite nice. They're being fed twice a week with um, comfrey feed and uh, I did manage to get most of the combs labelled and the colours are the same, although you'll spot here and there the odd one which is uh, the colours out of place, but I'll try my best bet the next year. Well that's planned, the uh, Calvedon Wonder Peas got evicted out of that spot. I'll give it a re-dusting with blood fish and bone and uh, I've re replanted the, um, that was there, the Hearst green shaft. And this side is a, a few weeks behind in the planting these were. That's another couple of rows of Calvedon Wonder. That's the final row, final planting of peas for this year. And hopefully we'll get a decent crop off those too. And I'll be able to show you the harvest. Well that tour took a bit longer than I actually thought it was. So rather than overrun the allotted time, I'll bring this one to a close. Welcome to all the new subscribers again, and thanks to everyone what does leave a comment, I do appreciate it. 
I was thinking earlier that it's been a good while. I don't think of this year actually that I've took it over the site. So I think for the next tour, I'll do a gentle stroll along the site and we'll have a look what everybody else is going. So until next time, I'll see you again and bye for now.